Hey guys, um, first off, please excuse me, I woke up with a really kind of bad cold this morning, and, uh, it, it's just getting worse. It sucks. But, uh, I had this, I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit, I've had this air conditioner around for a little while. Um, it was given to me for free because it didn't work. And the story that accompanied it was that the owner uh, had it running. I uh, went out to do some grocery shopping. Uh, they came back, and it was no longer running. Uh, when they tried to turn it back on, it wouldn't work. Uh, my first thought was blown fuse. Uh, other than that... I had no idea, but uh, I'm going to show you what I found, and uh, maybe if you have a problem with uh, your AC come next summer, you'll uh, you'll learn something and be able to repair it. Okay, first off, you'll see that I've already taken this apart. Um, it was fairly easy. Um, you, there's holes here. There's another one just like it on the other side, and then... Uh, there's two on the top. There's one just under here. Um, those are just clips, little plastic clips. Uh, and then there was a screw right in the middle. And I had to take out the, uh, d d the dust filter to get to that. There we go. That's a little better, isn't it? Alright, so we pop this off the front. Set that to the side for now. Uh, and as you can see, I've already taken apart the control panel here. Uh, I removed about a dozen, maybe not quite that many, maybe eight screws. Uh, and I had to take off the, the louvers that cover the open sides of the window because there was a screw underneath them I had to get to. And then that lifts off. And now, I'm going to show you some of the guts. Um, there's a coil under here. Probably can't even see that. But there's a, there's a coil under here. Uh, and that's the warm side. This is the cold side. And as you can see, there's a coil there. Uh, we got an impeller. And we got a standard fan blade. And they're being powered by the same motor. Uh, over here is our compressor. This is what actually creates the cold. Um, if we come down here, we have a capacitor. And we have a circuit board with a bunch of stuff I'll explain in just a few minutes. Oh, and uh, up here, as with any um, electronic device like this, you'll find a, usually find a schematic somewhere on there. Alright, so, once I got to this point, I started looking at things and just, just observing. Um, when I went to spin this fan, you can't see the fan, me. Oh, look at that, okay. When I went to spin this fan to see how, how loose and how tight it was, it was extremely hard to move. Um, I actually turned the unit on, uh, and I could hear the motor hum, but it wasn't moving. So I turned it off, spun it a few times, turned it back on, and it would just it would click over, and it would, it would move real slow, and then it would stop. So I... I did that several times, and I got the fan to move, and I'll show you. Oh, it's going to do it again. There it goes, okay. Um, all I did on the control panel here is I turned it to high for a few seconds just to get it up. But as you can see, it's it's spinning away fairly fairly steady there. I'll turn that off. Um, but yeah, this was this was absolutely stuck 
um, I could barely move it with my fingers. Uh, so then I came over here and I looked at all of my connections on my compressor. Everything looked okay over there. Then I came over to this circuit board and I found a fuse. So I checked the fuse. Fuse was fine. Um, I pulled out my multimeter and checked a few things. Everything seemed okay. So then I fired everything up. I turned it on and uh, like I said the fan was hard hard to start but it did start it did run um, and it took a while but the compressor kicked on as well uh, so what I suspect is the problem here is that either it's got some sort of delay built into the circuitry where the compressor doesn't come on immediately or the capacitor is bad um, it just it doesn't look bad if you look at the top usually when they go bad they start to bulge and this one's perfectly fine on top perfectly fine on the bottom well I mean technically this is the top and that's the bottom but either way um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good it's just um, it's a good indicator that it, that it's that it's good. Uh, what I'll have to do is uh, is sometime in the near future I'll take that completely out and uh, test it with uh, my multimeter. Um, some common things you might find, um, like I say, the first thing you should you should be checking for is this fuse. Um, check all your connections to make sure everything is solid. If if you've moved the air conditioner around, uh, something might have jostled and, and got free. Um, this guy right here is a relay. Um, as you can see, the main power from our power from our power cord comes in. It splits off. One end goes here. One end goes here into the relay and then this black wire goes up and that's this black wire right here not sure if you can see that very well so um, if this unit's damaged the fan might still run but the compressor is not going to run so uh, turn the unit on wait for a few minutes to to account for any delay circuitry um, and then check your continuity between these two poles to see if this thing is actually turning on or not um, the rest of this could fail and um, in a similar way and it, it, it would be just it would be very difficult to know um, the capacitor in the back two or three capacitors back there um, you might see them bulging, you might see them exploded um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't but overall if the if the circuit board is damaged the unit is basically scrap uh, send it to me, I'll tear it apart and build something out of it um, if we open this up you can see there's no real user user serviceable parts in this inside here so I wouldn't even bother um, all right let's get a little closer look at this these three right here you see the power goes in here this one is for the um, compressor these three are for your fan you have your I think it's yeah if you can look real closely there you'll see this one says H F A N 
This one is medium, low, high, obviously. Um, those are your three settings. And if you actually look at the fan motor, although it's upside down, uh, you can see it does say three speeds. So those are your those are your three speeds. Um, if your fan's running and your compressor's not, these aren't going to be the problem. But if you turn the unit on and you've got no fan, those might be your problem. Um, up here, I forgot to mention you have a, a step down transformer. You can see probably gonna electric gonna get electrocuted here, but uh, you can see it's got. Uh, 115 in. Let's bring a little closer. 115 volts in, 10 and a half volts out, uh, and I believe those 10 and a half volts are just to run this panel. Um, I could be wrong. It's been known to happen. So this is your compressor. Um, the cooling. Coolant comes out here through this uh, condenser, maybe? Probably not. Uh, up and around, down through this um, wall, and then goes into these tubes. Actually, the smaller one back here. I think this one is the outlet. Um, and then from there, it cycles around, um, down into here comes back up out here and then back into the compressor. Um, I believe the output side sits around 350-ish pounds. The, in, the, the return side sits around uh, 150 pounds, which is uh, pretty standard. Um, it does run it does cool. Uh, unfortunately, the temperature out here right now is not sufficient to get this compressor running, so I'm going to have to use my body heat to... Um, this is what, what uh, that wire that was inside this unit. Um, it's a temperature sensor. So I'll have to heat this up a little bit, and I'll be back in just a few minutes, and I'll show you it turn on. Alright, uh, I realize I forgot to talk about uh, what could actually go wrong with these units. Um, for the average person, basically the only thing you're going to be able to repair is a blown fuse. Um, you'll find them basically behind this panel every time. Uh, usually they're this barrel style fuse. Sometimes they're the automotive style fuses. Um, but they're, they're going to be in this general area. Uh, the other thing is this capacitor. Fairly easy to repair, um, not repair, but replace, uh, as long as you discharge them first. Take any piece of metal, um, go from one, uh, one set of contacts to the other, and if you're not sure um, which is the hot and which is the, is the neutral, um, just do it all three ways a bunch of times and you'll discharge it and then just undo it. Take it to a local uh, AC repair place um, and they should be able to get you a new one. Fairly cheap. Uh, okay, so I've had this temperature sensor in my hand for a little while. Heated it up to above the lowest temperature that this will go to, which is 64 degrees get this up here so you can actually see. Um, before you, you attempt anything like this, you want to make sure that nothing's going to impede either of the fans. Um, there's no wires hanging around. There's no um, leaves or anything inside the unit that could shoot out. Um, and then we press, press the on. What I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be a little loud, so I'm not going to be able to speak. I'm going to press the on button. You're going to see the degrees come up. You're going to see it says 64. Uh, the fan should be set to low. It probably, yeah, you can see that. Uh, and it's going to be set to cool. So.
you can see the fan is running. And then if you look down here, give this a few minutes, you'll see this frost up. I know it's, it's a little difficult to see the compressor running, but you can trust me that it is actually, in fact, running. I'm going to touch this and hopefully not burn myself. Nope, that's good. Okay. And you can see I'm wiping off the uh, little frost there. See if I can get the front of it to make you maybe you can see it better. There you go. So it is cooling. I know the unit runs okay, um, but I think I do need a new comp a new capacitor. So you guys have yourselves a good day.